Bad news, Marshal. Lay it on me. They moved the weapon. Harrow confirmed it herself. Jane's here? Now? Just saw her on the security feed. In some lab. Probably underground. Jesus. All right, new plan. We're not leaving empty-handed. We wreck this place, grab Harrow unharmed. I've got a few questions. I'll find a way out the ground. Moving out now. Seth, time to take that radar offline. My pleasure. Hello to all my viewers, in today's episode, after successfully connecting the 5070Ti card to MSI Claw, we will see how the Lenovo Legion Go will handle the eGPU, along with the new acquisition. Please remember to have your equipment updated and the Windows system to be free of free programs of Dubious Origin. So after connecting the card to eGPU and running the Lenovo Legion Go, the first thing I did was download the drivers from the NVIDIA website. I connected the eGPU directly to the console using a Thunderbolt 4 cable. Then I installed the drivers I had previously downloaded. Still, the image on the external monitor did not appear and the card was visible in the device manager. But the system reported that it did not work properly. This is a typical problem, nothing new, I had the same problem connecting the 4070 Ti. So I ran the NVIDIA Error 43 Fixer script, prepared earlier of course, and thanks to which the whole set started to work properly. So if you have this problem, please take a look at my guide on how to prepare this script, you can find the link below this video. I explained everything there in detail. 3 minutes of work and you have a working eGPU with an NVIDIA card. So I will fire up Cyberpunk, we will see what the frame gain is in the benchmark compared to MSI Cloud, where as you probably know I have to use my hub, which limits the bandwidth. With the technical issues behind us, I will be able to proceed to further tests of various games in different resolutions and monitors, of course in my next materials. I would also like to take this opportunity to prize the work culture of the entire set. The 5070Ti card, just like my previous 4070Ti, works quietly and maintains low temperatures regardless of the resolution. The whole thing makes eGPU an interesting alternative to expensive laptops. As you can see, the difference of about 20 frames with the X4 frame generation enabled. Let's see what the situation looks like when we enable the LSS and set it to quality. The benchmark result is then around 200 frames and in fact it is also like that during the game, which you can see now on the screen. However, not everything is perfect here. Due to some problems with the Call of Duty game, let's stop for a moment in Cyberpunk. We remain in Full HD resolution and on the screen you see two scenes. On one side we have DLAA settings and on the other DLSS at the quality level. 
We can see the difference here, not only in the form of FPS. If we start analyzing further, we can see that when we use DLA-A, the CPU usage is lower, and in turn the GPU usage is at a higher level. When we look at the scene with DLSS settings, despite having more frames, the CPU usage is higher and the graphics card usage is lower. Cyberpunk is already a few years old, but these are the first signs that the CPU Z1 Extreme may be a bottleneck here. Well, of course, I do not rule out other reasons, but these are my first conclusions. When I look at it, it reminds me of the times when I did tests after the premiere of GTA 5 and Witcher 3. But that was many years ago and this is a topic for another video, maybe someday. Now let's see how the situation will look in Call of Duty 6. I launched the game on the extreme preset with DLSS and frame generation turned off. Here it is much worse. CPU usage can reach up to 80% and GPU usage drops to even about 30%. While the first scene was not difficult, the further into the mission, the CPU usage become larger and GPU usage smaller. Towards the end of the mission it was quite difficult to play due to short cyclical delays in the game. Look here in one of the final scenes, it was already difficult to play in such conditions. Today I present a test of two games. These are two different games. If you ask me if after these tests I would recommend 5070Ti to eGPU via Thunderbolt 4 connection with Lenovo Legion Go, I will answer that I tested too short and I need more time, different games and different resolutions to form an opinion. And this creates some uncertainty, because if you had asked me half year ago whether the 4070 Ti Super is a good card for eGPU, I would have answered yes without hesitation. After this film, I intend to post films regularly, almost every day, with both 7800 XT and 5070 Ti cards. I think that these tests will give me a full picture of the real possibilities of this set, so I encourage you to follow my channel. Finally, a few more words about tests. If you follow me, you probably know that on my channel I post longer tests, usually of one or several games. I am not a fan of tests that show hard numbers from let's say 20 games. Of course, they give a certain idea of what the performance is, however, we usually do not know what the test procedure is and what it consists of. That is why I post gameplays from games so that you can observe how the entire set works during a longer session with the game. I could show 10 seconds of Call of Duty 6 and say that I have 90 FPS. Well, cool, but you would not know that there is a problem with the utilization of both the CPU and GPU, how it manifests itself and what are the effects. I am just developing my channel, but I hope that there will be people who think similarly 
and will accompany me in the premieres of the next materials about games. Greetings to everyone and see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.